Hello, Los Santos. You know me as Judge Grayson. My name's Nathaniel. Um, I have a statement I prepared. I am going to release that via LSBN. But before then, I would like to talk to you a little bit today. I think after recent actions, it is human nature for us to look at the person responsible, to aim our ire at individuals on both sides of the line. I think that position lacks perspective. We need to focus not on the people, but on the systems of power in place that have led to the ability of these individuals to take the actions we now call into question. The actions of the past two weeks are not from a vacuum. They happened after years of buildup, from adding a hierarchy to the judiciary, from removing our accountability to the people, making us dependent on the Senate, the curtailing of rights, that began in Sandy Shaw, continued in the removal of due process for one citizen in Michael Simone, to the actions of this week. Two years of legislative change with no checks or balances. We, as a society, are to blame for allowing this to transpire. I have for years acted within the system. I have tried to institute and bring about a better society, by being a personal example, one judgment at a time. If I was to continue that methodology, I would need to maintain the party line, be quiet and say nothing, continue to engage behind closed doors, talk to the people of influence privately. That has led to this. That no longer works. That leads to apathy. That leads to comfort and leaning on the status quo. It is now time to demand more than the dystopian nightmare we all live in. It is time to make our society more than it ever was before, better than it ever was before. We should learn from our mistakes and correct them. We should save the individuals involved and redeem them on both sides, but we should no longer accept the status quo. People should be held accountable but the system needs to be reformed and improved. If this costs me my job, I understand. But I will never place employment over principle. I will never place my personal comfort over what is right. I am a judge, first and foremost. I am a check and a balance, and it is time that the scales were balanced. The people of San Andreas should not accept the status quo they should question, they should challenge, they should demand justice. My name is Nathaniel Grayson. I have been a judge in San Andreas for over three years. I am here for the people. God save San Andreas. This is Nathaniel Grayson. As one of the longest serving civil servants in Los Santos, I must say that I am at a loss as to the recent events that transpired between the state of San Andreas and the Sanguine Isles. I have served as a judge for years. I take that position seriously. It has directed my personal and professional life for as long as I have lived in San Andreas. I have given up personal relationships to maintain my objectivity within my role as a judge of San Andreas. This past week, from a sickbed, I have watched in horror the actions of men and women that I once trusted. To watch them overstep, overreach, and abandon all sense of the duty and responsibility the roles entrusted to them should have had them maintain. The role of the judiciary is simple. We maintain the rule of law. We set aside all political affiliation, all personal bias, and we ensure justice. We are a check and a balance against personal and political bias. We ensure the rights of the citizens are not curtailed. We do not act out of hope for personal gain. We act out of principle. Any citizen who has ever stepped in my courtroom received a fair and impartial trial. I have sentenced friends to jail time and denied convictions against monsters who hurt people I cared about because my own personal experience means nothing in that courtroom. What matters is the due process. This week laws were written and enforced without any engagement at all with the active working judiciary. Where these laws came from I have no idea. No checks, 
no balances. On the 5th of May, 2023, San Andreas accepted the sovereignty of an island nation. We accepted that they had autonomy over their own fate and decisions. This was codified in our own legislation, in the Sanguine Isle Sovereignty and Extradition Policies, number 80606. By suspending that autonomy on the 20th of August, 2023, we denied that there had ever been their own autonomy. We created a legal contradiction that is so pervasive in everything going forward that it taints every action going forward. By what right and authority do you deny someone's personal autonomy? Do you deny someone's rights? Do you claim sovereignty over them? Judges engage with these laws and enforce them, but to what ends? For what benefit? Who gained what? Silence. We don't know. We'll never know. But did appointed positions, the threat of job security, taint those decisions? Even if they didn't, does the appearance of such conflict of interest taint the judiciary I've dedicated my life towards? In times of war, judges should not engage. Before today, as the only judge who has ever convicted anyone for treason in San Andreas, every person charged after the war in Sandy Shore has done so in my courtroom. I speak as an expert on this. I speak as the only expert on this. Everyone charged signed a plea deal. No steps were skipped and all due process was maintained. Questions should be asked about the conduct of anyone who engaged with this recent war, what they did, why they did it, what gain they received for their service and to what ends. Promotions. Financial. Influence. Favors. All of these backroom deals done for power and the promises of further power should and must be questioned. This extends beyond the judiciary to all the corridors of power, all governmental branches. No one should be assumed to be above said levels of corruption. As a judge, I step beyond my own personal needs to ensure a just and fair society. Anyone using the position and influence of a role like mine for personal gain should be disenfranchised as quickly and brutally as is possible, and denied any public position of power ever again, even if their actions were purely to maintain their positions. No longer should we accept we were only following orders as an excuse for conduct unbecoming. No longer should we accept someone's divine right to assume the sovereignty over other sovereign beings, especially those we have no jurisdiction over. The citizens of San Andreas should demand more, should demand better. You should demand a government that represents your needs, your beliefs, your rights, not their own greed. You deserve a judiciary that acts from a position of principle, not panic, not fear that acts from the question of what can I get out of this, but how does this serve the people? As a private citizen, I of course have feelings and thoughts. Those have no place here when I act in service of the people. We must, of course, in the quiet recesses of the night, assess and contemplate the emotions, the actions of this past week raised in all of us. Contemplate and reassess who we are as people. But I ask you all, take a larger look at this. Find perspective. Ask yourselves, who are we as a people? Who are we as a society? Does our authority come from good principles, from moral fortitude, from a desire to do the right thing and follow the rule of law? Or are we happy being in charge because we have the biggest tanks? I know personally I do not lower my standards to the level of the person who stepped into my courthouse. I will not lower the standards of our society to the level of threat that we face from outside. My standards and principles are non-negotiable. I am, and will, always be a check and a balance. If the people of Sanguine broke our laws, but we had no legal recourse due to jurisdictional issues, what would I do? I'd impose economic sanctions. I'd impose trade embargoes. I would deal with them with the authority of one nation to another. But I would understand... Should such a time as war become a necessity, that I would then engage with international law taking jurisdiction over the conflict. I would act with principles. I would not deny the humanity and sovereignty of a nation to justify war crimes. 
In the quiet recess of the night, when it is still and calm, I would still be a man of principle. I was only following orders. It does not mitigate your own crimes. It just condemns you as a coward for acting regardless of your own conscience. Removing the rights of your enemies is the same thing. If you cannot charge and convict people in a court of law, by what right do you deny them justice? Because I said so, is the childhood lament of idiot children willing to stick to might makes right. But it does not absolve you of wrongdoing or of moral failure. If you claim sovereignty over an individual, grant them the protections of your citizens. Rights and responsibilities come hand in hand, or injustice follows. Removing the rights of your citizens is the last outpost of despots. Maintaining the rights of the worst in your society shows that your society is just. The veterans of the Sanguine War may be criminals. They may deserve their punishment. We don't know because no justice was done. But what happens to them when they have served their time? Are they citizens of San Andreas again? Do they have a place in our society? How can they ever trust a system that once removed their rights? As a nation, as individuals, as both. How do you redeem people you don't accept as people? After the actions of the past few days, of the past two weeks, it is not a few people in Bolingbroke that needs to be redeemed. It is our entire society. And what we have allowed it to become. Now starts the hard work. Now starts a new era of accountability. My name is Nathaniel Grayson. I have served as a judge for years in the state of San Andreas. And that is my verdict.